People will ask how Chinese see mental health. I would say there has been more stigmatization. There has been lack of understanding about mental health in the community. But we have seen improvement over the decades. Um, the family and the patient has been more able to accept mental health treatment, more willing to come into this clinic to get help. So I'm Ho Ming Chu, uh, a psychiatrist working at the Chinatown North Beach Mental Health Clinic. It's a uh, mental health clinic operated by the city. I'm the medical director of this clinic. I've been there about 12 years. Personally, I feel very privileged to be able to work in a, a clinic which also has a lot of uh, patients share my language and share my culture background. I feel I can contribute a lot I um, feel I'm useful using my language to the profession I'm in um, and I think that's a unique opportunity. So our clinic uh, has about 70% uh, Chinese, uh, more than half of them speak Cantonese, uh, tend to be monolingual Cantonese speaker. Uh, we have about say about 10% Vietnamese speaking clients and about 5% Cambodian speaking clients. So the Chinese uh, patient we see in the clinic comes from different immigration paths. In the 1960s, when Americans opened up the door for immigration, um, many families bring their relatives from China. And there's a major influx of Chinese into San Francisco. Uh, and then they tend to be Hong Kong from Hong Kong, and some of them from Taiwan. And they tend to move to the uh, uh, labor business, uh, factory, clothing factory, and restaurant. Uh, Prior to them, the more old, older generation Chinese, they have been here many, many years, uh, and then they tend to be the ones speaking Tuasanese. But the newer immigrants speak Cantonese. And then there's a further a new wave, that in the 1980s, when China government opened door, there are many uh, Chinese moved directly from China, Canton province, to San Francisco. In the recent 10 years, although, we observe more Chinese from other parts of the country. They don't speak Cantonese, they speak Mandarin. They also come through Hong Kong to Canton through our uh, San Francisco area. Uh, so, so when we see our current Chinese um, patients, uh, we encounter a more diverse language and a more diverse uh, uh, immig immigration background, immigration history. And, uh, and then their values are not all the same. So I mentioned uh, briefly about the Vietnamese and Cambodian group. They have a different immigration path than uh, most of the Chinese group. Uh, so the Vietnamese group came in the 70s or 80s. Uh, it's related to the, uh, the change of Vietnam into a communist country. Um, and so the Vietnamese group, uh, some of them came just around that time when the communist regime take over of, China, of Vietnam. Uh, some of them actually come maybe over the next five to ten years after they uh, run away, run away from the country, went to a certain location, refugee camp, and finally gathered uh, with their family together in San Francisco. Yeah, the Cambodian group uh, came also in the 1980s. Uh, it happened after the Khmer Rouge, and uh, many of them actually uh, went through a certain refugee camp in the Southeast Asia countries. And then finally, also uh, maybe join their family or with the governmental arrangement, they settle down in San Francisco. Um, I will have to say the Vietnamese group and Cambodian group, their path is more difficult, more longer. There are lots of more trauma happen to them. So the, um, the, the mental health problem stay longer with them. And their children also tend not do as well as the Chinese group. And then um, they tend to still stay with their language and their culture. So it's harder for them to adapt to, this, uh, to the American culture. Uh, so about 40% of my uh, daily work, uh, my caseload need uh, translation, Cantonese translation or Vietnamese or Cambodian translation. Uh, fortunately, uh, our, our translation all done by our social worker, case worker, nurses who speak the language. So when they are in the room, uh, I also uh, rely on them to fill in me about what happened to the patient outside the session, um, socially and um, family-wise. Uh, so it's a very, uh, it's very important time that, uh, that we're all sitting together to talk about the patient, not just for language translation, but also for many other clinical purpose. 
So working with the, uh, uh, the Asian American or the immigrant uh, population uh, is very unique. Um, although I'm Western psychiatry trained, uh, but I realized since, ever since I, my working here, uh, my work has to be always incorporate biopsychosocial model. Um, because first, uh, we have to understand the persons as a whole, their immigration background, their culture background, and what they what they see themselves, um, and how they what's their value, and how do they how they see Western biological focus um, intervention? How do they see medication? Um, how do they accept the Western focused psychotherapy paradigm? Um, so I, I also become more flexible. I become more a learner of my patient rather than telling them what to do, uh, because I realize. They actually teach me how to make them better. Um, and uh, I definitely learned to work with family a lot. You know, I'm coming from the, uh, the culture background, so I have, I have a lot of respect for traditional medicine. So I tend, to, I tend to talk with my patients to see which are beneficial and which maybe I will have to tell them maybe I, we're not sure whether they are helpful or maybe not even helpful. Um, but I definitely feel um, traditional medicine is very important for my my clients and um, we have to work with it. Um, in fact, our clinic actually has an acupuncturist uh, who actually deliver acupuncture and then education on how to use herbs. Um, so so we, we do think that is a very helpful perspective. I can think about a um, you know, couple clients I have. The culture factor is very important in, in the care. Tend to be older adults. Um, tend to be someone brought here with, uh, by their children, could be a son or daughter, uh, and then the son or daughter tend to be the major caretaker of the, the, the person, the patient. Many of my work is actually not just treating and helping with the patient, but also helping with the caretaker to uh, give them encouragement, to give them guidance, to help them to do their job better, to sometimes alleviate their sense of guilt uh, to help them to, to know that they don't have to take all the responsibility, to give them a resource and a, a connection they can go to. So the major, the few major challenges I encounter daily with uh, my work will be um, the lack of resource uh, for, for this group I'm, I'm working with. Um, the clients I'm serving, um, many of them has uh, limited income and limited ability to, um, to communicate. They don't speak the language, many of them, or don't speak the language well. Uh, they don't have lots of connection. So that not only their healthcare ability is limited, their housing is limited, uh, and then um, social benefit is limited. And um, that make uh, all the care of them is very difficult. Um, Sometimes we have patients, they need to go to a, a certain level of care, such as residential care, boarding home. Um, there's no language there for them. So they cannot feel um, adapt into that housing arrangement. Um, and that creates a lot of stress on patients and on their family as well. Uh, so we often have to work with a community program to, to um, advocate for them to hire language appropriate services. The other challenge is actually the, uh, the lack of uh, education and understanding about mental health, as I mentioned earlier, um, and then the stigmatization of the family. Um, there's, uh, there's maybe some resistance existing in the patient and the family of taking um, the Western type of psychiatry approach, such as uh, accepting the diagnosis, accepting the need of medication, accepting the approach of psychotherapy. Um, and the, uh, the willingness to say more about what happened, about more about what happened in the family, not just uh, in terms of family psychiatric illness, but also about the conflict happening in the family. And sometimes that make you have uh, difficulty in knowing the whole picture of the patient. So, so to deal with the uh, resistance of the patient and family because they're um, uh, feeling the uh, stigmatization of uh, having mental illness label. The first is to, uh, to, to, to be on their side, to see their point of view, 
Uh, don't don't force them that uh, that our Western psychiatry view um, that uh, that they truly have certain thing we think they got to be treated. I think the first is help them to understand. Um, we just there uh, want to uh, help to understand whatever way we can. If their way is important, we see how we can start with uh, from their angle. Um, I feel a lot is uh, there are lots of anxiety in patient and in family. That's why they do come to see us. There's a lot of anxiety. The first thing we do is to alleviate that anxiety, um, to assure them that uh, we'll try the best to take care of them, uh, and to assure them that, uh, that we're not going to take away their privilege, their, their input, and they're always important uh, part of the whole treatment. And then uh, sometimes start with there, they start to, to be willing to think about other options. So my, uh, my, if I have some advice uh, in general to, uh, um, to psychiatry work, work in this field, I think the first is to, uh, to, to try to be a learner uh, first, to understand f by being a listener, to having critical thinking, uh, to learn from the patient and their family uh, of what's happening. Um, you know, I think uh, the training gives us lots of solid foundation and knowledge and skill. Uh, but I think every patient, and I learned myself too, are all different. And uh, they have very different story. Even in the same Chinese group, everyone is very different. Uh, so it's very worthwhile to spend the time to listen and to understand each person's need. Uh, and then that will really carry you along. So I think the basic foundation is empathy and try to be a critical thinker. And, and uh, that, that does help you to um, move further and, and then work well with the patient.